Hello and welcome to another video from Andy's Shed. Today we're going to be taking a look at this telephone which is an Australian 400 series phone and more importantly we're going to be telling you some of the pitfalls to watch out for when you're buying telephones online. Now um, I buy a lot of old phones online and most of the sellers that you buy them from fall into two categories. They are either people who know a bit about phones, um, maybe they are collectors and restorers um, and are pretty good at describing what they've got. Um, the other category is people who know absolutely nothing about phones and openly admit to it and say what you see in the pictures is what you get ask any questions you like um, but I know nothing about them personally um, both those things are fine but there is also out on eBay a small minority but nonetheless still a significant number of people out there who are scammers trying to pass something off for something that it's not and they either end up selling something direct to you or they sell it to somebody else who then unknowingly sells it to you um, so today I thought I'd show you this phone because this is not all that it appears to be um, it's an Australian 400 series phone. Um, these came out in Australia in the late 1950s. The actual main body of the phone is almost identical to a uh, GPO 300 series phone that were actually going out of favour in the 1950s in favour of the 700 series in the UK. The only difference between this and the 300 series is there's no little draw down here and no blanking plate for a draw slot. But that's fine, a lot of 400s were like that. Also, the handset is different. Um, this is what the GPO would call a handset number one. It was used on the 700 prototype phones that weren't proceeded with, they gave way to the 706 and etc etc um, but this is the baker light handset but slightly more modern design than on the 300 series in the uk this is the right handset for an australian 400 series though so that's fine as well what's not so fine is the dial i can tell from the shape of the finger stop with this straight edge on it and the stop not being curved that this is a UK dial 21 now dial 21s were used in Australia but as far as I know they were not used on 400 series phones they were used on later plastic phones that they had so there's something odd about this dial it's got a GPO dial 21 fitted also this finger wheel is not a standard wheel for a GPO dial 21. It's metal, it's gold in colour, it looks like it's probably brass um, and they just didn't fit brass dials to brass finger wheels to dial 21s. Now what I think this finger wheel is, is a late um, addition to the dial because I think these finger wheels were used on certain replica phones made in the I believe 1970s by a firm called Conversation Pieces and I think they had these finger wheels made to make their replica phones look older which was fine if you're making it making a replica and you're using some modernish bits on it um that's fine but it's not a gpo spec finger wheel is what i'm saying and the dial on this phone shouldn't be that kind of dial at all so let's have a look underneath see if that gives us any more clues and indeed it does 
underneath we've got marks PWM66 here. Um, well, PWM66 is um, likely the maker and the year it was made, 66. We've got 400 MT up here, and 400 tells me it's a 400 series phone. 400 MT is the type of phone, and then the subtype of the phones, so the exact model within the 400 series is marked underneath it, which is which is 1 slash 403. I don't know if you can see that there. 1 slash 403. Now, that might explain a bit about the dial, because the 403 type phones didn't originally have a dial at all. They were a dialless phone, the dialless variant of the 400 series. So, at some point, somebody has fitted a non-original dial to a 403. Okay, so that's fine. Yeah, we can work with that. So somebody's fitted a dial where there wasn't a dial originally. So they're forgiven for fitting a non-standard dial because there wasn't a dial on this phone originally. Okay. So the markings tend to tell us it's definitely an Australian phone. There are also Indian phones that look like the British 300 series. The way to tell the Indian ones though is that these screws that hold the base plate on are normally in the middle of the feet. So they're a little bit further in on the phone and they're in the middle of the feet. So when you take the screw out, the foot comes with it sort of thing normally. In this case, it, that doesn't happen though, so I'm pretty sure this is a genuine Australian phone. Now the Indian variants, all the technical stuff inside the phone, all the gubbins is um, fitted to the base plate normally. On the GPO 300 series, it's fitted to a separate chassis, so when you take the base plate off, the separate chassis is still inside the phone. The Australian variant, the 400 series, which is a kind of cross between the GPO 300 series and the GPO 700 series. <coughs> um, the 400 series in Australia, um, that can have either. It can have the internal chassis or it can have things fitted to the base plate. I can tell you because of these, all these screws and that in the base plate here, this is probably going to be one with the internals fitted to the base plate. So, what we'll do now is we will take the base plate off. And we'll have a little look. See what we've got inside. So here it comes, and as I suspected, all the internals, except for the actual dial itself, are mounted to the base plate. So, how is it looking? Well, it's not looking great, to be honest with you. It's all fine. It's all fine. It's all, all looks Australian. Um, no reason to think it isn't. This sort of silver hammerite painted base plate is something that they did in Australia. That's fine. But if you look, there isn't much of anything inside this phone. There's no capacitor that you would normally find. And more importantly, for the UK at least, there's no induction coil. Now the capacitor and the induction coil should basically be long tubular like structures 
uh, one should be fitted here and one should be fitted here just can't remember off the top of my head which one goes at which side but one should go there and one should go there and as you can see there are holes here 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 and one down here um, where screws should go through to fit those and they've been taken out and I can see because there's some dust on the base of this phone I can actually see a witness mark in a sort of square shape around there and around there and on this side sort of up there and across there and down there where these components were and they've been taken out so there's components missing inside this phone it is all wired up and it does have on it a UK plug because this was actually bought from a seller in the UK but the problem with it is if there's no induction coil it means the line voltage of the telephone goes through the handset now in the handset obviously in here you've got a little microphone in here you've got what is in effect a little speaker and a speaker works <coughs> excuse me by um, passing an electrical current um, over a magnet and uh, that's how a speaker works you know if you've ever taken a stereo speaker apart in a in a home stereo system you'll know there's a magnet in the back of it well the problem is if line voltage is going through this then if the line voltage is the wrong way around to how the magnet is polarized it can demagnetize the magnet and so damage the speaker in the earpiece of your phone and that's why they really do need a induction coil now it will work without the induction coil and it will probably work for some considerable time maybe a number of years but over time it will damage the magnet that is in the little speaker in here so a phone can be made to work without an induction coil and indeed this one is all wired up and looks like it may well may well work it will may even work without the capacitor in the UK because now in the UK we put the ring capacitor in the line jack uh, rather than actually in the telephone so here's a phone that's been wired up but has had two fairly major components inside it removed now whether the seller knew this was the case or whether they were acting in good faith they maybe bought it at an auction or something um, and knew nothing about it we'll never know but I just wanted to make this video to show you some of the pitfalls of buying stuff on sites like eBay or Etsy and things like that and why you should never pay top dollar for anything on there unless you are absolutely sure you know everything about it uh, you have seen pictures not just external pictures but pictures of the internals as well get them to take the case off even the most ham-fisted person should be able to undo a few screws and take the top off a phone show you the internal workings like I've done here so I just wanted to make this video to make you aware of this problem and it is a problem with Bakelite phones particularly and particularly British Bakelite phones that some people in the act of so-called restoring them have been removing um, the induction coils and wiring them without the induction coils and it's because the induction coils have a value in themselves and they think oh 
phone for a member of the public, they're not going to know any better. We'll just take the induction coil out, you know, and, and they won't know any better. Um, but here's a warning that you should always look inside the phones before you buy them. So I hope you've enjoyed this little video and uh, I hope we've taught you something about induction coils and capacitors and things and bits that may be missing inside your phone even though it will still work. So have a look inside yours, make sure you've got an induction coil in there and uh, let us know what you find. Remember, you can get in touch with us if you want to by visiting our website at uh, andyshed.colpress.net and uh, use the contact form you'll find on the website if you want to get in touch or you have any questions. You can also support us on Patreon if you like what you see here. Uh, go to patreon.com forward slash andyshed and for just the equivalent of one uh, pound a month um, you can support us on there, get your name on the end credits of our videos and it helps us basically make more content like this for you. So, from me for now, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.